I'll take it back and coat. Hi, everybody. Making sure you guys are working collaboratively, getting that code and accessing Lou and Lena and myself to help you with any debugging. We're going to talk about functions today and what those are and how they are used within computer science. And then we have a couple of projects I think are going to have some fun today. What you want to do is look for these. It'll show you C5 and it'll show the positive. We know the future is digital. That really means every job requires some level of digital literacy. So that's the, the space we're in and the investments we're trying to make. I'm the district technology coach for the Cucamonga School District. I'm an instructional coach, so I provide um, support and professional development for all the teachers within our district. Our school community serves the 19 Pueblos of New Mexico, but it allows them the power to control how they want their kids to receive a holistic native education. You need to actually introduce computer science education in every discipline in K-12 schools so that you could prepare students for a digital age and a digital future. So we do a, f a few things here. One, we're space. Right, creating space for youth to come in and get access to technology, to safe space. And we, we create space that's modeled after Silicon Valley. My name is Mark Takano. Uh, I'm a United States congressman. I was a K-12 educator for nearly 24 years. Maker technology is, it falls into the big rubric of, um, of innovation and keeping America as a prime innovating enterprise. And what Tech Kids Unlimited is trying to do is give neurodiverse students a real fighting chance in terms of entering the world of work. We get together teachers that teach students with disabilities and then we invent technologies for them to use and then we distribute those nationally so that kids can learn to invent things for themselves. Well, the idea was maybe we can teach every kid to invent just a little bit at a time to slowly build up. By 2034, if every kid has 12 years of computer science under their belt, that's a huge difference in terms of potentially what they've been exposed to. This is how we make the box go. Because I did go straight, so it will go straight on my letter, and then I'm going to do going down, so it can go down. Makerspace is not just Makerspace me. It's more than that. It's my place to be creative and myself. Computer science and maker education is as important as learning reading or writing or math or science. Only 51% of U.S. high schools actually teach computer science. Only half of schools in this country are teaching the thing that could be the most important to arm the future workforce. Our wait time was too fast, so like it was going too fast. We tried three seconds, it was too, still too fast, then we hit our money spot, it was four. And then we just changed just two things, it's just wait time right here. So if we think about it, who are the people that are most influential when it comes to computer science? We put teachers first. We know they are the ones who are bringing the magic into the classroom. And so when you impact an educator, you're actually impacting thousands and thousands of people because they, they're, the roots of what they do grow deep and broad, broader than most teachers ever know. And it's really important that we are able to resource our educators um, so that they're able to learn in a way that is comfortable for them, in a way that doesn't add on extra burden so that they're then able to teach our students how to become those critical thinkers, critical learners. The Pathfinders Institute was started initially as an in-person deep dive for K-12 educators to almost go back to school. We took Pathfinders to a virtual setting. We've created a version that is available and free. It has about 60 courses or content on it right now, and that's the Pathfinders Online Institute. I'm learning right along with my students. They see the projects I build, because that's the other cool thing with some of these workshops with Pathfinders. You actually, you know, you'll build the projects or you create um, the software, and then you can show the students, like, hey, look what I did. I think right now what we're offering as a collective organization is hands-on learning. I see them struggle a lot, and then when they solve it, it's a whole different ballgame. Then they're like, okay, well, now I want to do this again. Whoa. This is 
so amazing. This is like the best thing well, this I've ever had in my life. You have like a sense of joy. It's just like so cool when you figure out what you have to do. All of that basically just gives you like more fuel to keep on going. Everything about TKU is fun. Like I can be a kid again. I like I can enjoy learning along with my students and learning these skills just because it, it's fun. It's really, really fun. To see like the brightness in their eyes every time something works is truly amazing. It makes me feel proud of myself that I actually accomplished something that I didn't know I was capable of. I'm going to be amazing in the future with the help of Makerspace. If they want to create a different future and a different path for themselves, that starts with us because we're giving them alternative ways to look at life. The organization is is really taking something that wasn't meant to be for our communities and sticking it into our communities because we belong there as well. There are big pockets of our country who believe computer science is inaccessible to them. Low-income schools and some of the very rural schools who are two times less likely to have computer science offered than their high income or their urban counterparts. What's possible if kids in Watsonville and Salinas were to walk in a space that was highly resourced and, and, and had the best educators and had the best technology. What if I was to do that for young people? What's possible? You know, we also want to look at ways in which the federal government could increase access to maker technology and maker spaces and to democratize uh, the opportunities to take advantage of uh, maker technology. Right now we're faced with an educational system um, that is largely state-run and there's huge gaps in inequities across the country um, by state and even within states. And so there is a challenge, like how do you deliver education in a way that's personalized, that is responsive, that helps children not only memorize facts and learn things, but actually learn how to apply them. And we know maker education does all of that. Computer science education does all of that. It gives our students the opportunity to be the best they can possibly be. When you work with people, you know, on the other side of a nonprofit who really understand the programs that you do and go the extra mile and deeply care about the fact that all students are different. It's, it's just, to, to have Infosys Foundation USA as a significant funder of Tech Kids Unlimited for five years is just magical. The end goal is really to truly democratize the idea of like innovation and creativity and making to everybody that desires it. Those teachers need a lot of the same support that students need, you know, and they deserve it too. I think we have this single, narrow, unique opportunity for the world to embrace it in a much better way so that we could uh, create an inclusive, diverse future for uh, the next generation. This is computer science for all. And we are a foundation that is one drop in a wider community but that is our ethos, that's our, our DNA. To create the next scientists, the next app developers, that's why I have a STEM lab. When I go into a classroom and I see the kids kind of face kind of light up, something again, like magical that happens and if I can bring that to more and more students, then that's something that's gonna you know keep driving me forward.